Aloha, I'm Lila Berg. We're here at Leeward Community College Theater with local leaders to hear about the thriving performing arts community on the west side of Oahu. Thank you for joining us on Island Focus. So when we walk into the lobby of this community college, one does not expect such a fabulous and contemporary mural. It is impressive when you do see it. It's entitled, Man's Relation to Nature in Old Hawaii. And you'll see how there's a combination of warm and cool colors, blues, greens, and browns, and how he tries to integrate all of that together. Jean Charlot was a esteemed artist and a teacher who came to Hawaii in 1949 and he worked with this, his team of students. It took about three months to do this mm -hmm. and so this was part of the opening of the new Leeward Theater back in 1974. Well and when we look at the theme it's very contemporary now as we're looking at Hawaii's sustainability mm -hmm. yeah. and helping young people especially at this community college to remember our sense of place. Here on the Leeward side um, I think there's probably more of a recognition of what it means to be in Hawaii. Yes, yes it does. Fabulous, just fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Rochelle. Uh, you must feel like as excited as I am to be in this place. Yeah, it's so good to be back doing live, in-person things, for sure. Why is performing arts so important to you? Yes, uh, so yeah, I became artistic director when we started the program in 2004, many years ago. And uh, I started the program at Kapolei High School where I teach acting and theater and musical theater. And we started this program because there was a need in the community for just really good theater. Kapolei was so new back then, so there wasn't really a program that pulled, you know, together in Kapolei. And we do all kinds of theater. We have a summer program that we were doing for the little ones to kind of come in and learn and have fun. And we would have our high schoolers intern, you know, and teach and mentor them. So it's a community-based program. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, everything's about family and bringing the family together. And if they don't have family, you know, they kind of become family in our program. We have all, we call them our drama mamas, and they kind of just adopt the kids. So they're actual performances that you, that the, that the teams or the families give. Actually, our, our parents mostly help behind the scenes, but we have had performances where dads have been, we did Newsies and we had these dads who were the cops. <laughs> and it was such a great dynamic for them to work together with their kids and, you know, see them together backstage so they could be, you know, not only mentors, but kind of show them how to be responsible and be resilient and work together. It's a different relationship when parents are playing, so to yeah. speak, right? Than if they're parenting at home or even uh, trying to monitor their kids in the, in the academic world. Yeah, and I don't think these kids would see their parents in that light. Like, I think seeing their parents play, it kind of strengthens their relationship to see, you know, these this other side of their parents, for sure. And I would imagine, too, it's really significant for both parents and children to feel that their artistic expression is valued. It helps them grow. I think it helps them become the individuals they're supposed to be uh, and be okay with who they are and exploring. You know, so many times we're just kind of boxed up and, you know, we have to take these standardized tests and get good grades and do all these expectations, clean the house, do all these things that parents expect us to do. And, you know, to be able to be in the arts and explore that side is just, you know, it's immeasurable, like at how it helps them grow and become who they are. And what is your background? How did you even step into this? Oh, I grew up here. <laughs> um, I was very fortunate to grow up in Hawaii. And I, you know, did theater through high school. Mm -hmm. 
And I went to UH Manoa and Kennedy Theater did shows there. Great program, loved my... So your parents service. always nurtured this and encouraged oh. you. Yeah, I was very fortunate and blessed to have parents that were okay to let me explore and do whatever I wanted to do because I wouldn't be who I am today if they cut that off, for sure. And so then you start teaching and mm -hmm. you must have had a principal at Kapolei yes. who gave you that space. Yeah, I was, I was very fortunate to be hired by Alvin Nagasako way back in the day, 2004. Um, and he was such a visionary and he would just support any ideas I had. And through him and the subsequent principals like Wesley Shinkawa, who I have now, they've just supported everything. Our administration is amazing at Kapolei High School. And so I've grown the program from nothing to incorporate acting, theater craft, where the kids are learning to build and take down sets. I actually created the code in the ACCN for a musical theater class. So statewide, they can do musical theater one through four and put on productions in school because some kids are working after school and don't have the time, but they want to do theater. So at least it gives an opportunity for all kids, you know, to do theater. Well, then you make a very good point that theater is not just the performers on stage. Correct. It's backstage, it's the lighting, it's the setup. Yeah. You know, what thoughts do you have um, as we wrap up our conversation for today? Uh, what thoughts can you share with the audience and to encourage parents uh, and, and young people too to explore this profession? You know, there's theater programs out there all over, you know, whether you come to ours or any other theater program, if you really want to learn about yourself and be more confident in who you are, I think theater is the way to go. We actually are coming back. We have on our website, Pack is Back, because we're doing Moana Junior in the fall. That will be our first in person. So auditions will be up in the fall <laughs> and hopefully people will, you know, be ready to come back and perform on stage. And I think they are. I get calls like every week. Are you ready to come back? So the need is definitely there. So I would say let your kid explore everything. Well, and what I appreciate is when you speak about this, that is your passion personally, <laughs> as well as professionally, there's a joy that you exude. Oh. I imagine you see that on stage uh, oh, yeah. and also behind stage when, when the parents yeah. are involved. Yeah, I mean, the, they're just so happy to be together and, you know, make friendships. And these friendships last. I still have alumni that ha come back and say, Mom Paro, you know, like they call the mama's names and, you know, they're like, oh, I did this or, you know, I'm in this class. I have this amazing acting teacher. Like they still remember those moments. And, you know, I know the pandemic has taken away a lot of those moments. So we're excited to bring them back because, you know, when you're you remember your childhood, those are the things that stand out when you connected and made relationships with people. Your joy is overwhelming. Thank you so oh, much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. This was wonderful. It was so nice to meet you. We've just had the opportunity to meet Rochelle Amparo, who is the Artistic Director for the Performing Arts Center of Kapolei. Mahalo for joining us. Welcome to Leewood Theater. <laughs> what a wonderful place this is, and you must love working at this community college, but such a beautiful place. I do. Um, you know, the theater was built in 1974 to serve the Leeward and Central Coast, but we actually serve all of Oahu and even the state. And when you say serve, that means performances are available? We've had productions here that have been directed by faculty members in our drama department. We've had dances here. We've had musical performance here. And high schools, of course, must have access to this place. Oh, yeah, of course. We've had award ceremonies here for things like the Science Olympiad, where you've got every seat filled with <laughs> screaming kids. As I remember, we also used to have the Nutcracker performed here as well. It's a great theater, and it's equivalent in size to about UH Manoa and UH Hilo. So in terms of renovation, because mm -hmm. it's obvious if it was how beautiful it is. Built in 1974, it's starting to show its age. So 2016, we started a renovation project that went for about three years. And what you're looking at is almost brand new because we only had one performance in this before COVID shut us down. So it's a chance to regroup and pause a little bit. And can hardly wait to see what comes next. Yes, me too, thanks. Mm -hmm.
so nice to see you, Robin. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been many years. Yes, <laughs> a long time. And you've been quite busy at Nana Cooley. Uh, would you share a little bit more about your role and um, the Performing Arts Center? Well, um, this will be my 32nd year at Nana Cooley. I'm currently the school's activities coordinator. So I also teach the after-school performing arts program, otherwise known as MPAC. And we are in our 31st year. Uh, I had to take my first year to just get my feet stabilized, <laughs> and then I developed the program in my second year. And, and what exactly is the program? It's after school, so the yeah. kids, do they get credit? Some middle school to high school are eligible to receive credit. We are open to any student, public school student, even charter school, from grades 4 to 12, from any school. We start at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and we go to 6 p.m. We meet every day and some weekends. So that allows students from other campuses to get to our school. So it's almost like an after-school sports program. Yeah, and we compete to recruit kids <laughs> because of sports. It's kind of hard and things. But So as a performing arts center, what sort of productions do you create? Obviously musical theater, things like Disease, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, as well as dramatic productions. We've done The Odd Couple, Vanity. Really? And our third, I guess, prong is social issue plays. Mm. So we've done plays that dealt with diabetes, abuse, substance abuse. We partnered with different community programs, such as play builders and things. So when one speaks of performing arts, uh, the viewing audience perhaps might consider that just being on stage. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more involved. Oh, the whole process. I mean, you, you're integrating actually ELA skills. You're integrating math when we build sets and things. And ELA is? Is Eng English language arts. Okay. So, you know, uh, and even social studies, because a lot of the plays, especially the dramatic, you know, we bring in experts who deal with some of these social issue topics that the play will address. So you, you do... I want to say in servicing or uh, content? Yes, yeah, as depending on the topic. So for example, recently we did a play called Dragonfly that dealt with foster children. That was in partnership with Play Builders and we had Terry Madden come in to work with the kids and discuss some of the issues that the foster kids go through, which ironically, we found out half of our students had experiences in that. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, one of the things I think the performing arts provides the students is an outlet to realize that they're not alone, that they find a place to belong and feel accepted, and also tapping into strengths that they may not have known they had. Uh, not every student's an athlete, not every student may be like an academic student, but by performing or by being a part of the program, we hope to encourage all of that. I've always said that our program is not to make you a Broadway star. It's to develop the self-esteem, self-confidence and skills needed post high school. So whatever you learn, you can apply to wherever. And I would imagine some of that, uh, some of those skills have to do with getting along with people, exactly. communicating better. Yes. You know, their self-esteem is so fragile yes. in middle and high school. What have you noticed relative to the relationship between being in the Performing Arts Center and their academics? I think hearing from parents and teachers that they see an improvement. I would love to say 100% every student, but we, we meet our challenges. And part of it is that I think it's kind of like athletics, right? Because if, if the grades drop, parents are going to pull them out. Mm. So we try to encourage. We offer tutoring. Uh, we have older students or alumni who come back and we do tutoring before the rehearsals to help them. Uh, we have resource computers and things that they could use and things. So, you know, I, I think it's not just about being on stage and, and doing the show. In fact, I always tell the kids it's the process and what you learn through that. And the culminating activity is the performance, but it's what you learn along the way. As we wrap up our conversation for today, what is your greatest joy? seeing the students blossom. You know, we've had students who could not even say their name in front of a group of other students. And they're singing lead vocal, they're doing a monologue, they've become leaders. And just getting that reinforced from parents and like I said, other teachers of how they've seen their self-esteem grow. And I think a lot of that is attributed to the students, the staff, in creating that safe environment for them to take risks and make mistakes. Is that part of your story too? 
Um, I'm actually an introvert. <laughs> and it, it's really funny, you know, a lot of people know me or, or, or who may not know me are kind of surprised that I'm the performing arts teacher, you know, but that makes me understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. A lot of our students deal with anxiety, some other issues and things. So, you know, I think giving me that perspective of what kind of support they need and things. I love the artistic part of it. I love being backstage. I love being behind the scenes and just giving the kids the credit because they're the ones doing a lot of the work, so yeah. Well, thank you for your devotion, your commitment, not only to performing arts and students, but also to this side of the island. We thank really you. appreciate your energy. Thank, thank, you. thank you. We've had the opportunity to meet Robin Kitsu, who is the executive director for the Nanakuli Performing Arts Center. Aloha. So what room is this? <laughs> this is a set design room, and this is where all the magic happens. They create large scale backdrops and scenery for the main stage. And although we have a lot of equipment in here, we also have some older things. I mean, over there we have some <laughs> big fake rocks. We have canoes that shouldn't be going in the water. We have columns for some scene of maybe from ancient Greece. It's really a wonderful space that students can work and create things with our set designer. So in addition to set design classes, you have other aspects of the professional field as well in subject areas. Yes, we do. We actually have a very strong art department. We have drawing, painting, ceramics. We have digital photography. We have digital art. We have digital media. And students can basically run the whole gamut from performing arts to the visual arts. It's so impressive that this is a two-year program they would get an associate's degree mm -hmm. um, and also be launched into a career if they wanted. If they wanted to, exactly. And we know that there's a lot of students who have started here and gone on to the big time. And even if they do things for themselves in enrichment, they do maybe community theater in addition to whatever they have to do. It gives them a great place to start. And I'm sure you've noticed on campus that their joy level and their, their sense of uh, connection has grown. The, the students just light up and, 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 the, and the audience has this great response with them, especially seeing students that sometimes they're not just young, sometimes they're older returning students, but the whole thing is that everybody has a chance to learn how to collaborate and to expand themselves uh, through acting. Fabulous. Thank you, Terry, for joining us. You know, your role with Play Builders of Hawaii is so important. Maybe share with us, please, the, what you do there as executive director and what is Play Builders? Mm. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's an honor and, and I am truly a fan. And a joy to a be fan. together again. <laughs> yeah. Play Builders' mission is to gather and share real stories that resonate with, empower, and connect the many culturally rich and diverse communities here in Hawaii. We have worked in communities that are geographic, such as Waipahu, Wahiwa, and Chinatown. And we have also worked with special interest groups, such as Hawaii's homeless, LGBTQ communities, foster care, and we're still working right now with domestic violence and currently working with Hawaiian Mission Houses and the Pa'i Foundation play turned film, which is playing right now called Open Your Hearts Wide by Marion Lyman Mercero. My job as the executive director is for an organization as small as ours, I do everything from community organizing to grant writing to finding uh, the artists that work with community. So I do everything. It is my life and I love it. How did Play Builders even get started? What was the, I, I heard the mission, but what was the impetus for that? It was a personal journey for me. I hit 50, my children had grown up and I just thought, like, what are my gifts? You know, what, what is it that I have to offer? And the thing that I knew the most is theater. Mm -hmm. But I've done a lot of community theater, and I thought, that's just not quite enough. I want to do more. And I thought about stories, and it was a 
I wanted to go to uh, back to school to study social work. And so I was learning these new skills and it just hit me that theater has the properties if used in a different way to help entire communities. And so instead of getting my master's in social work, I decided to get my MFA in theater. And I worked with wonderful people like Dennis Carroll, Marcus Wessendorf, Elizabeth Wickman Walzak. And after I got my MFA, went to California and studied with what was then a 25 year old company called Cornerstone. And I got trained there and I came back and I, I brought the discipline here. So really what I hear you saying is that stories matter. Your story and you're looking at your life was a catalyst for what your organization is doing now. Mm -hmm. What are you finding when people discover their own story? I think, especially when we're talking with people who've been through a lot in their lives, and sometimes there is shame associated with trauma, even if whatever happened wasn't your fault. It's like you don't want to share with people. It's something you keep inside. But there are a few brave souls that do come in and they do share their stories. I've asked them, why are you here? Why are you sharing this? And they tell me because they want it to help save someone's life. So it's very near and dear to your heart that mm -hmm. we are here on the Leeward side. Mm -hmm. How does the West side relate to Play Builders? Our first fully community collaborative play was in Wahiwa. We did it at Dot's restaurant and we called it Wahiwa Remember When. While I was there, I, I learned that Wahiwa is the pico of the island and it's where everything of importance should begin. Mm -hmm. So I felt very blessed and lucky that that's where we began. And we met so many wonderful people uh, who continued the journey with us and became part of us, of our organization. Mm -hmm. We became artists in residence here at the Leeward Community College. The first one was called Yes I Am, and it was with the LGBT community here at Leeward. And that was so much fun and so great and so meaningful. And then we did the Waipahu Project, which was amazing. We went to Waipahu, collected those stories, brought them here. We made many friends, and some of those people are on our board of directors and yeah, and isn't forever that part friends. Of what theater is about. Right. Telling stories, making friends. Um, as we conclude our conversation for today, uh -huh. what is a message that you can give to the audience? The message I would like to give is listen. Listen to each other. Mm -hmm. Listen to our land. Listen to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to add to that. Maybe part of the message, too, is have the courage to speak it. Absolutely. And they're all heroes that have shared their stories with Play Builders. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do and uh, the love you have for this side of the island, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and for the generosity of your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. We've just had the opportunity to meet Terry Madden, who is the Executive Director of Play Builders of Hawaii. Mahalo for joining us. So we're in the basement of the theater now, and this is part of the renovation as well? It is. It's called the Black Box because it looks like a black box, and it's also the Lab Theater. And this is where we have more experimental productions. Everything in here is new. In fact, it used to be the old costume room. Hmm. The track lightings have changed. The floor has been replaced. We have a sound booth that allows the controller to control both the light and the sound. So it's a little bit more of an intimate space to, to practice their scripts or practice the, the, the more specifics, I guess, of theater. Exactly right. And so uh, anyone who's been to a production here, and if you hear about them, please attend. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, intimate space, very well put. Uh, and uh, actually, there's one more renovation I want you to see, and that would be the dance studio. 
And so what we see in here is that room. Take a look at the ballet bars. These are called sprung floors. It allows a student to not hurt themselves with their dancing. And the room next door is actually larger. And the great thing about the large dance room is the fact that it is about the same size as the theater proscenium so that they get a real idea about what it's like to dance in there. And that's covered with what's called a marlow floor, which is a vinyl floor that allows a little bit more control for the dancers. And all of these classes are credited? They're all credit classes, and it's open to the public. In fact, it's a lot easier to get involved than ever in taking a dance class. Especially at a community college. Especially at a community college. I love this. This is fabulous. Thank you for being with us today on Island Focus. I'm Lila Berg. On behalf of the Island Focus crew and the entire team at Olelo Community Media, aloha and malamapono. Be kind to yourselves and let's take care of each other. See you soon.